I'm Luke Schellmer. I'm an ENT doc. So we've talked some about the nasal airway, uh, specifically the septum and the turbinates. Uh, I want to talk to you about the way we shrink turbinates, what's called a turbinoplasty. Um, it is a very commonly done procedure and for years the way it was done was what's called a turbinate resection. Okay, Basically a doctor would go in the nose and it cut off part of the turbinate. Sounds good, very effective, but it led to problems. And I'm going to show you here in a second um, how that the, the problem with that. And so um, I call it the old way. Um, so there's three basic part of the turbinate. There's bone underneath it. There's this soft tissue, and that's the part we want to get rid of. And then there's a mucosa or the lining. Okay. Well, if you just cut off this swollen part of the soft tissue and mucosa, again, you make it a lot smaller, but the problem is you've also cut off all this lining, okay? Well, the turbinates actually have a role, they have a purpose, and that is to humidify air as it uh, flows through the nose. The, the sensation of healthy nasal airflow is a huge lifestyle issue. It's a huge thing that makes us feel better. That's the reason why patients like breathing through their nose. People like breathing through their nose is because it feels a whole lot better than breathing through your mouth. It's much less dry, and that's again, big reason why patients come in to see, see me is because they're like, if I can't breathe through my nose, I don't like it. It doesn't feel good to breathe through my mouth. My mouth gets real dry, and I feel like I'm just not getting as much air because of that healthy nasal airflow is such a big important part um, of, uh, of how we're designed. So if you leave that scar behind, though, the problem is that's no longer healthy lining, and it doesn't do the same thing. And so. The last thing we want to do is to turn our nose into another mouth where you're like, when I breathe my nose, I still get that dry air and sometimes the nose will fill up with, with dry crusts, basically giant boogers and it was what's called empty nose syndrome and it was a horrible side effect or, and it could be a long-term condition of old, outdated surgical approaches. So I've shown a picture of the, this thing called a microdebreeder, and I've got one in my hand. Basically what it allows us to do is a newer type of surgery. And this was de uh, designed in the, uh, in the late 80s and 90s. Um, it's what's called a submucosal resection, okay? And so basically you have the same three structures to begin with, the bone, the soft tissue, and the mucosa, but we made a little incision right at the very front of the turbinate, and we basically insert this tool down the, the inferior turbinate and it allows us, when we turn it on, and it kind of sucks that, that soft tissue out of the way while largely leaving the mucosa or the lining intact. And so um, you basically still have the bone, still have the soft tissue, and still have the mucosa, but the mucosa, the soft tissue is, is, is much smaller, and that mucosa now just kind of curves around. Um, and so it's kind of like turning a grape into a raisin, okay? You could make a grape smaller by cutting it in half, but then you've got all that flesh that has to, has to seal over. Whereas if we just suck out the insides of it, we could turn a grape kind of into that shriveled raisin structure, but it still has all the lining intact. And so that's the really the, the newer way, what's called the submucosal resection, decreases that chances of having that empty nose syndrome. Not to say it could never occur, it hasn't occurred in my practice, but, uh, but it makes it infinitesimally smaller chance of having that risk, okay?